It began with a contradiction that should not have existed. The Starlink V3 satellite system was engineered to expand global bandwidth by an order of magnitude, a platform built to move one terabit per second through the vacuum of space with mechanical precision. Its architecture was larger, colder, and theoretically more stable than anything SpaceX had launched before, suggesting no inherent point of collapse. Yet the point of failure did not emerge in the distant orbit, but on the ground itself, a highly advanced factory designed for orbital speed collapsed at its own production pace. This paradox, where the speed of deployment interacted negatively with the material tolerances of the payload, became the core problem. A. Engineering mechanics. Curiosity. Understanding the anomaly requires a precise understanding of the machine itself. A Starlink V3 unit is a 1.25-ton module, representing nearly triple the mass of its predecessors. This mass carries high-throughput hardware consuming more than 20 kilowatts of electrical power necessary to feed the onboard laser network that drives a full terabit per second of downlink. The V3 frame houses a triple redundant communication bus, an optical terminal cluster on the upper plate, and a high efficiency phased array antenna the size of a compact automobile door. Reaction wheels maintain orientation with a precision measured in microradians, an acceptable torque variant so small that earlier V2 satellites never approached the operational thresholds. The entire architecture was designed to respond to the constraints of power and volume, but the introduction of sustained terabit-class traffic during simultaneous maneuvering operations introduced load patterns never before tested in orbit. C. Environmental or physical constraints. Partial comprehension. These systems operate in a low orbital environment, approximately 350 to 550 kilometers above Earth, where atmospheric drag is low but still present. This necessitates constant micro-adjustments from the electric thrusters. When exposed to the launch environment, the satellite stack was subjected to mechanical vibration levels around 7.4 GRMS during the Starship ascent, followed by a rapid depressurization event that induced momentary thermal shock. Moreover, the interior acoustic pressure inside Starship at max Q exceeded 150 decibels. This intense mechanical energy, combined with the rapid depressurization, produced uneven heating inside several modules and launched a cascade of microfractures along thin antenna support frames. The entire structure behaved correctly under its design assumptions, yet the gravitational coupling between the satellite's mass and its thermal distribution system shifted subtly under these extreme loads. B. Human or Institutional Decision Logic Inversion The earliest signs of trouble were subtle enough that they were initially dismissed, yet they were large enough that they could compound into catastrophic failure. Flight data from deployment windows revealed power fluctuations and thermal loads exceeding predictions by margins that seemed small. Records show engineers flagged a redesigned production line that introduced faster solder reflow, reducing manufacturing time, but slightly altering the long-term reliability curves of the boards, yet the schedules overruled the cautionary findings. The core inversion came from the organizational belief that a faster launch cadence would not fundamentally change the failure mode distribution. The minute oversight was treating the slowness of a mixed manual aerospace line as a simple staffing issue, failing to recognize that aerospace tolerances punish variability and handoffs. D. Systemic Risk and Inversion Insight the physical manifestation of this overlooked assumption began with minor telemetry drift, a 4.7% intermediate bus voltage fluctuation that occurred at TB1142 minutes after deployment. This pattern of slight thermal overshoot, voltage drift, and micro-vibrational oscillations during high-throughput operation suggested that marginal tolerances were approaching their limit. The near miss arrived when one satellite executed a routine 42-second thruster burn while simultaneously routing peak traffic through two laser terminals. 
during this window, internal waste heat exceeded 190 dairy at localized nodes. The system had been tested for such high current draw, 20.7 kilodollar from an 18.1 kilodollar nominal load, but not for the exact combination of orientation, eclipse transition, and peak laser load now occurring. Temperature readings at a DC-DC converter rose to 124 degree warmth, just 6 degrees Celsius below its critical limit. Had the satellite rotated 5 degrees earlier, the radiator would have faced a colder vector, dissipating enough heat to stabilize the system. Instead, the control unit attempted to compensate 1.2 seconds too late. A power transient moved through the communication bus, and the primary high bandwidth functionality was forced into an automatic reset for 47 minutes. E. Moral or Civilizational Layer Controlled Uncertainty The post-analysis confirmed that the failure was not rooted in software or component failure, but in the physics of heat transfer itself. The initial thermal capacity assumption that held true for the smaller V2 satellites scaled non-linearly in the V3 architecture. Previous models assumed radiative efficiency scaled directly with surface area, but in the larger V3 frame, mass and internal volume increased faster than the radiator area, causing heat absorbed to rise disproportionately. This was not a design flaw, but a scaling oversight, a mathematical limit reached only when the system encountered compound stresses at full performance. Aerospace structures respond to pressure, heat, and vibration with mathematical indifference. Human schedule pressure cannot override the laws of momentum. The system failed because it was optimized too aggressively in the direction of speed, and the humility of engineering requires accepting that an assembly line must be engineered with the same rigor as a rocket stage. F. Future Vector Anomaly In response to this thermal exposure, the engineering systems introduced specific, quantifiable corrections. Software patches were issued to reduce the laser load during propulsion events. Radiator coatings were modified for higher emissivity, and future V3 deployments were assigned narrower operational windows to prevent eclipse transition heat buildup. Satellite frames have been stiffened by millimeters, and the separation timing has been shifted by fractions of a second. However, uncertainty remains embedded in the next generation of designs. As throughput increases and the Starship launch platform continues its evolution, the payload environment will shift again. The core open question persists. How fast can the system scale before physics demands another, more severe correction? A. Engineering Mechanics Curiosity The full scope of the failure chain includes the ground system, which was fundamentally exposed by the constraint of manufacturing throughput. The architecture of the new factory was a direct response to this bottleneck. Instead of relying on manual labor, the line was segmented into cells with fixed tack time, where bare panels enter and integrated spacecraft emerge. Robotic screwdrivers with torque traceability assemble structural interfaces, and machine vision confirms the precise alignment of optical terminals. The satellites themselves were redesigned for this robotic access. Fasteners aligned to a single tool plane, harness connectors keyed for blind mate, and panels size to standard grippers. This design for flow principle was necessary because on the old manual line, throughput died by a thousand perfectible cuts. Temperature zones varied, pace staged during breaks, and connectors saw different hand forces across shifts, seeding defects that were only caught much later by time-consuming tests. C. Environmental or physical constraints. Partial comprehension. The punishing cue in the old system sat not at assembly, but at test. Thermal vacuum, RF alignment, and laser link calibration absorb immense time, and shared resources guarantee collisions in the schedule. A satellite waiting on a chamber is a satellite that cannot launch. 
The material itself knows nothing of the schedule. It responds only to temperature and time profiles. When a reflow oven sees more open and close than it sees heat, joints become statistics, where a robotic control ensures they become constants. The factory had to be designed to respect the physical limits of production processes. Heat profiles for solder do not care about ambition. Optical alignment tolerances for laser crosslinks do not care about hope. B. Human or institutional decision logic, inversion. The most subtle inversion was the flawed assumption that an aerospace line could scale like a consumer electronics plant simply by hiring more technicians. Adding people added variability and handoffs. It did not add speed. The catastrophic ground-based cascade was schedule slip leading directly to Constellation under fill, which forced orbital plane deployment lag and increased collision avoidance burns, compounding the structural losses with lifetime penalties from extra propellant. The factory choked the sky because the launch cadence reached the factory ceiling. The problem was not the rocket, but the inability of the ground process to feed it consistently. The reversal was ultimately a matter of calendar mathematics, not philosophy. D. Systemic risk and inversion. InSight mission data confirms that the overstressed satellites exhibited premature thermal cycling failures during orbit raising and display battery regulation drift, with a smaller portion showing laser link instability where beam steering deviated by fractions of a degree. The systemic risk on the ground was measured by Little's Law, where coefficient of variation in cycle time overwhelmed the buffers. Work in process exploded, hiding defects, starving the downstream, and masking the true causes behind inventory queues. Before the new factory, rework rates on complex assemblies forced second and third thermal test cycles, which stressed hardware, consumed chamber hours, and pushed deliveries into later launch slots. This delay meant in-orbit activation occurred in different solar seasons and different interference profiles, consuming critical power margins. The constellation only behaves at scale. Underscale is a functional failure mode. The solution was to slash variation, control cycle times, and balance the lines so that bottlenecks became measured, not merely guessed. E-moral or civilizational layer, controlled uncertainty. The insight payoff is precise. Variability was the true failure mechanism. Single model automation became the countermeasure. The moral gravity here is the hubris of believing that master technicians and a heroic culture can carry volume when thousands of units per year are required. The automated line replaces special pleading with discipline. A broken torque trace is an immediate line stop. A chamber out of calibration is flagged by data drift, not operator report weeks later. The pride of the engineering team shifts from heroic saves to the quiet, predictable authority of the control charts. The system was not fighting external forces, it was fighting itself, and the verdict of physics is the refusal to accept any mysteries in time, heat, or flow. F. Future Vector Anomaly The consequences of correcting the ground system ripple outward into orbit, launch cadence stabilizes, in-orbit mesh density rises, which in turn lowers per-link power for the same throughput, extending satellite lifetime by saving propellant used for collision avoidance and station keeping. Before the new factory, schedule slips forced awkward phasing that added up to avoidable maneuvers, shortening life by grams of propellant turned to exhaust. After the change, rate steadiness allows phasing plans that minimize these burns, protecting orbit life. However, automation introduces its own failure modes, robot drift, fixture wear, and software bugs that stamp the same wrong parameter across many units. While the factory mitigates this with calibration and statistical process control, the vigilance must be continuous. The Constellation's appetite will continue to grow, and each model shift, from V3 to V4, risks breaking the line's delicate balance, testing flow again. A. Engineering Mechanics Curiosity a word on the laser crosslinks demonstrates the rigor of the new approach. These require micro-radian level pointing stability and immaculate optics. 
on a manual line, dust is a defect discovered only at burn-in, policed by protocol. On the automated line, optics live under controlled mini environments with interlocking doors where particulate counts are continuously logged. Throughput rises not because the lasers are simpler, but because the manufacturing conditions are precisely consistent. The victory mechanism includes robust sensor traceability, where every torque operation logs an ID, angle, and final torque, and every reflow logs temperature versus time. This digital thread allows unit genealogy to trace backward from a failure in minutes, not days. C, environmental or physical constraints, partial comprehension. The sheer volume of new satellites introduced new environmental constraints, particularly the issue of orbital drag and synchronization. V3 units sat at a higher altitude, around 550 kilometers, where solar activity created more unpredictable drag spikes that altered the predicted node spacing by centimeters. Centimeters at orbital speed are enough to distort the critical timing windows required by the high-throughput laser mesh. Furthermore, the power systems on the V3 units unintentionally created small, periodic oscillations. Rapid battery draw during nighttime heavy load cycles produced heat pulses, which caused temperature swings that altered beam alignment by fractions of a degree. This structural flex compounded the synchronization problem, creating optical noise that the mesh had to continuously compensate for. B, human or institutional decision logic, inversion. The flawed assumption that led to this optical synchronization crisis was the belief that simply increasing the satellite count reduced risk by providing more paths and options. But internal thermal cycling tests demonstrated the opposite. With thousands of simulated satellites active, the system shifted from resilient to brittle under heavy load. The overlooked variable was optical congestion. Laser links increased coordination demand, requiring link timing to hit windows measured in microseconds. This pressure revealed that more satellites produced more potential points of error, increasing the mathematical pressure on synchronization and transforming the network into a system vulnerable to millisecond drift. D. Systemic risk and inversion. Insight. The severity of this synchronization failure was demonstrated in the laboratory, not in space. The system came within 0.09 milliseconds of an unrecoverable loop, a threshold where link switching would have cascaded across the entire mesh. Such a cascade could have forced thousands of satellites into emergency load reduction mode, causing the global network to flicker in a silent digital stall. The causal mechanism was not a total hardware collapse, but a synchronization failure that was corrected only through a fundamental rewrite of firmware, a redesign of buffer systems, and a recalculation of laser link redundancy protocols to tolerate greater variance. The true insight is that when scale reaches a threshold, stability becomes a function of mathematical tolerance, not mere material strength. E, moral or civilizational layer, controlled uncertainty. The Starlink V3 expansion forced engineers to accept that more satellites required a higher, more rigorous degree of precision than fewer satellites ever did. The factory replaces the uncertainty of human variation with the quiet discipline of automated control. A manual line might lean on an expert to feel an adhesive cure. The new line measures it. The system has been taught the hard lesson. The system that should have been the most robust risked the most complex systemic failure. The moral dynamic shifted from the heroic mastery of individual systems to the humble sustained control of the overall process. F, future vector, anomaly. In the end, the system taught a structural lesson. Abundance introduces fragility unless synchronization adapts. The network stands stronger today, redesigned with a deeper understanding of its limits. However, the uncertainty lock remains. 
as the constellation's appetite grows, as bandwidth demands rise, and as laser networks continue to evolve, new variables will inevitably emerge. New tolerances will shrink, new constraints will surface. This system, like all engineered systems, lives under the unchanging verdict of physics. Human design can stretch limits, but it cannot erase them. The next boundary will appear when the mesh again approaches the edge of stability, where order meets the silent judgment of orbital mechanics.